we're live. Hey, everybody. Welcome on in. It's Wednesday, 5 p.m. Eastern. That means it's time for Live at 5. Every Wednesday, I do a live broadcast, and you come, you hang out, you maybe learn something, you maybe don't, but you have a good time either way. So tonight, we're going to be making tiles. So I've got some finished tiles here. Now, these are for kind of a strange project, but they're actually for the substrate on our leopard geckos tanks. We have two leopard geckos. So these are for them, but I'm gonna teach you all how to make tiles that you could use your kitchen countertop, your backsplash, in your bathroom, maybe for a little tile table, your floor, whatever you wanna do with a tile, I'll talk about it. You got questions about tiles or pottery or just anything that I can answer? Come ask and I'll do my best. So we're gonna do that and I'll talk a bit about the clays that you wanna use for this and you know glazing and other considerations and thickness and all that. We'll do it all. We'll talk about everything. It's, this, is, this is all you ever wanted to know about handmade tiles, right? And you weren't afraid to ask. Don't be afraid now. Just come and ask me and I'll give you the answer. So a little bit of business before we get started. A couple of new classes on tv.clayshare.com. So I have two over there. One is this fabulous scalloped rim plate that is made to hang on the wall. You'll see we have little hanging holes. You can put your wire through there. Have a nice big um, foot to hang it on. So your lizards live outside. I live in Vermont where it snowed this morning. Our lizards would not live outside. Sadly enough, they wouldn't make it. Uh, so we keep lizards inside. I wish I lived somewhere to have pet lizards outside, but we have habitats for them. And uh, you know, they, we love them. It's just how it is. So this right here is a plate I made in that class and then using that essentials hand-built form. So this is a basic form that once you know how to make this plate, you can do so much with it. You can glaze it, you can carve it, you could put underglazed decals on it. So the first class I made using this shape, and there'll be more, is this one right here, which is using Amico Velvet Underglaze to create a test plate so I can have all of the warm colors that Amico makes on one plate that'll hang on my wall and I can use it as a visual reference in my studio. I also have one behind me with speed balls under glazes too. So I am in Vermont. I like to say Southern Vermont, but it doesn't really matter. Northern, Southern, it's pretty cold. <laughs> it's, it's how it is here. All right, so about fireplace tiles. Yeah, I'll talk about fireplace tiles too. They're uh, very similar to what you would use for a backsplash. They're just decorative tile. So we'll talk about it all. Hey everyone. So you have lizards run all over your porch and lanai. Uh, yeah, when I lived down in the South in North Carolina, we had cute little lizards that lived outside. They were not pet lizards. They were just cute little things. So a couple other things that are happening this week in Clayshare land. I have a new wheel throwing class that will be out on Friday. So you'll want to check that out if you're a wheel thrower. And this class is actually a tool class, a studio tool, a piece of equipment you can make yourself on your pottery wheel. So I've got that coming out Friday and tomorrow, super exciting. I have two new glazes coming out with Clayscapes Pottery. It is my lake blue. That's this blue right here. And here it is on a casserole dish, or if you'd rather see it on a bottle. And my cobblestone, which is this gorgeous gray right here. And you can pair them together, as I've done on this bottle, or you can use them with my spearmint, which is my other glaze which is this one right here. So you can put the lake blue and the spearmint together. You can put the cobblestone and the spearmint together and get gorgeous effects that way. You can put Clayscapes Cream Glaze, amazing glaze, looks fabulous on everything. Here it is on my cobblestone. Here it is on my lake blue. Could have gone thicker, but I didn't want to overdo it, right? So do I publish these glaze recipes? These here, because I have a contract with Clayscapes Pottery and they make and sell them commercially, I cannot give these glaze recipes away. But 
on my website, clayshare.com, under resources. I do have a list of glazes that you can go and get and make. I have a clear, a satin, I have a couple others on there. You're welcome to go and grab those glaze recipes. But these here, um, I'm not quite able to give out the recipe for them. All right, so that's the exciting news of what's coming up with the new glazes. Now, let's make some tiles. Are we good on Facebook? Are we there? Facebook was having some special times. Did we get I Facebook it, back? I got it fixed. Is this cone, these glazes are not cone 10. These glazes are cone 5, cone 6. That's these, these here, although you can push it to 10, I would do tests first, but they are formulated to go to cone 5, cone 6. So that's, that's the, that's the plan. So we're just waiting for Facebook to catch up with everybody. Hi, everybody. Yay. So Facebook's working now. We got Facebook going. Yep. We've got Instagram going. We've got Vimeo.com and Clayshare.com going. And YouTube. uh, YouTube's up now too. Awesome. So we have everybody. Hi, everyone. Everybody everywhere is here. So now we're going to make some tile. And it's super exciting because a lot of people want to make their own tiles and they don't know they can, but you can. And you can make tiles to use on just about anything you want to use tiles on. <laughs> All right, so a tile is basically just a clay slab, right? That you cut to the size you want, and then after you glaze and fire it, you install it. And so you can use these for so many things. You can use them by themselves if you wanted to make yourself a little trivet or um, sometimes they call it like, um, you know, a pan rest or a pot rest, right? A, if you want to. Or you can use them for tiling various things in your home. All right, so Facebook sorted, everybody else is sorted. So I have a few references and I did put these in the Clayshare Amazon shop, which is amazon.com slash shop slash Clayshare. And you have to type that in to get to it. That's just the only way you can do it. And um, someone's asking if you can save this video. This video will be available on replay on my YouTube channel, my Facebook page, on Clayshare.com and Vimeo.com. On Instagram, it will not. Instagram doesn't let me keep them. It's a 24 hour only, but everywhere else, it's there. So we can, we can watch it on other sources. What would be a great way to learn to be ordering a pre-packed box for a project and an online class with the supplies. It would be great if I could do that. So I have the project and I have all the supplies available, but in ceramics that's difficult and having that available around the world is even more difficult. We have a lot of Clayshare members in Australia, in the UK, um, you know, in other places in Europe. We have some in Asia. We have them in the US and Canada, in South America. It would be all really difficult for me to put together a little box class pack and send to you. Not impossible. Something I would be willing to do if we could get a company to work with me to do it. Maybe Mako wants to work with me and we could do something. Like a box subscription. Like a box subscription, right? Like a monthly pottery box project. Huh. Well, let's just see what we can do. I like the idea a lot, so we'll just have to see what happens. All right. So I've got a few resources for you, and these books that I'm going to list off are in my pottery books on the Amazon page. So this is a great one if you're looking for inspiration for patterns. This is the Tile Artist's Motif Bible, and I'm going to apologize to the folks on Instagram. It's backwards. The text is backwards for you all. I can't change that. Instagram does not let me, but everybody else gets to see it the right way around. So this one has a bit about making tiles, but mostly it has a lot of little singular tile projects where they show you a image, like you want to make this little crawfish here, and they give you the instructions on basically how to do it. So they give you the design idea. So it's good because they show you different things, but also it's a great reference if you're having difficulty being creative. Like this is just simple carved lines. How easy is that, right? So this is one I've had for ages and I reference it from time to time. And it's just, if you're gonna make tiles and you don't know where to start, this is a nice little book and it's $6. So it's like $6 is nothing nowadays, so it seems. And then, um, I know, glazes on subscription. Oh, like, like your subscribe and save. Glaze, oh my gosh, that would be amazing. Let's see what we can do. 
what I think is the absolute best book on making tiles, if I was going to buy just one book, it would be this one, Angelica Pozo. Um, she is a ceramic artist. I believe she's out of Chicago area. Um, but she has this great book. When I first wanted to start teaching myself how to make tiles, I looked to her because she's such a really good um, inspiration. She goes over tools and materials and techniques and installing and that's my daughter's achievement card from swim lessons from 10 years ago. She made it to level three. She was a dolphin. Oh, cute. I know, I'm going to save it forever. So this has a lot of great information in here. Also has some recipes for some slips that she uses, but she shows slip trailing like we did last week. She shows carving. She shows inlay. Lots and lots. Yeah, Josie, you probably have this book. It's amazing. I love it. And she knows her stuff. This woman does nothing but tile work. I shouldn't say that. She does a lot of tile work and she's very well known for it. And hey, she's got the same slab roller as I have. She also has a Bailey slab roller, so she knows what she's doing. That's not why, but she does know what she's doing. So she's a great one. This is again, making and installing handmade tiles from Angelica Pozo. It's in the Clayshare Amazon shop. So you can check that out. If you're looking for a book on tiles and you just wanna get one, that would be my one to get. So, um, and if you can find it secondhand, sometimes you can get it cheaper. And then the last one I'm gonna share, well, I have another one that's handmade tiles. Um, by Forrest Leach Middleton and it's a brand well it's a relatively new book I have it I've been waiting for um, I didn't bring it out though but it's a good one if you want a modern more recent book um, Angelica's books 10 or 12 years old and Forrest's book is like within the last year so it's good and he mostly does um, underglaze transfer on his tile work but he has a really nice section on the history of, of ceramic tile and the use of the patterns and everything because that's really his specialty and then yes yeah, she has videos on angelica has videos on ceramic arts daily too so if you're looking for videos um she's got a bunch i mean she's an expert i i'm a i'm a i make tiles but not a tile expert person <laughs> Uh, all right, and then the last one I have, which is one I've had for quite a while, is called Handmade Tiles from Frank, Frank Giorgini, and he does a lot of press tiles, but he has a nice history of tile making. If you want to make your own plaster molds for tiles, because you can make them that way, and then you press your tile into it. He even has instructions for making a tile press. And there it is, right there. So this book's good for that. It's a little more expensive. It's like $44, I think. Um, but it's really a great book. And if you get into tile work, you'll probably think it's worth it to get this book if you really want to, to do tiles. All right, so that's a little bit of um, some resource material if you're looking. Now, I will do a longer formal class on Clayshare about making tiles, and we'll have tile projects. We're going to do a tray with tiles in it. We'll do a table. I'll also walk you through making tiles for a countertop because I'm redoing my countertop in my kitchen. So um, if you want to do your countertop, I'll walk you through that as well. All right, you missed the beginning. That's okay. You know what? Just go back and watch the replay and you'll be all good. So uh, I think we'll switch the cameras to the overhead view now, and then you'll see all my little tiles I have here. So I've got some little ones, and these are just some examples of what you can make with tiles. There are so many options out there. Um, and these would be the kind that you would use for a countertop. These would be the ones that, I'm going to bring you all a little closer so you can see a bit, bit better. Um, these would be the ones you would use on your countertop. These are a little small. I made these as test tiles because I am doing my countertop and I want to make them like a mosaic, like a sea glass mosaic. This one is not going to work. I'm thinking these three colors, they're all Amico Celadons. This is, I believe, Fog, Aqua, and Storm. I have to look um, to see which one that is. No, that's not Storm. Um, what is that? I'll have to go look. Ice. Ice, I think, ice 
who knows I'll look it up it's fine but the fact is this is what I'm planning to do my my kitchen counter so let's talk a bit about the clay this is Laguna B mix 5 without grog that clay will work perfectly fine for making handmade tiles you don't need to have a like special tile clay if you're going to be using them inside so if you're going to use them outside you might have some other considerations such as can it withstand the weather freezing temp hot heat on it you know you have to think about those things so if you're going to use them outside i would suggest a cone five or six clay or a cone 10 clay i wouldn't suggest an earthenware especially if it's going to be on the ground and i would get a clay that has a lot of grog made for outside tiles and there are recipes you can make your own and there are companies who sell it so you could get some if you wanted to so yeah so here is a little thing i'm going to tell you the thickness determines what you can use your tiles for that's it that's all so if you want to do a backsplash you would roll out a slab about three eighths of an inch or a countertop three eighths of an inch and once it dries and fires it's about a quarter of an inch thick that's fine for your backsplash for your countertop for doing any kind of like a trivet or if you wanted to do a mosaic table or any tabletop you could also do it for a fireplace surround at that thickness if you want to make tiles that you're going to walk on you need to go thicker i would definitely consider doubling up your thickness so you end up with a half an inch so you roll out a little thicker than a half an inch slab of clay and then you add your texture or however you're going to decorate them and we'll talk about warping in the making yeah i'll go through all that we're going to get there don't worry we're going to get it all done we're going to talk about i'm going to make i'm going to make tiles for you so these are just little ones that i made as tests for color and also to see how the glaze looks on the tile and I have uh, lots of different textures so that I can see how it breaks. All right, so we're done with the finished things. Let's move to actually making some tiles. And I've got a slab I've rolled out to 3 8 of an inch right here. So I rolled this out using my slab roller. If you do not have a slab roller, you can totally still make tiles. My suggestion is to get some thickness strips find out where I put mine hey Kev you want to grab me a pair down there by my they're actually on the other side of the slab roller up against the little cabinet he's going to grab me some so if you don't have access to let me zoom out so y'all can see my my slab here doesn't matter that's that'll work so I rolled this out with my slab roller but if you don't have a slab roller you can get strips like these right here and uh, so Starry Road Studios, I can't close up on Instagram. Instagram will not let me zoom in. If you want the close up, you need to come to Facebook, Clayshare, Vimeo, or YouTube. Sorry, hon. Instagram sets those rules, but everywhere else I can zoom in. And they have a look. Uh, everybody else is looking from the top. So you put this down and you just roll your clay out using this as your thickness guide. And this is a good thickness for making a floor tile. These right here. And this I would roll out thinner for what I'm going to do. So 3 8 of an inch for a backsplash, countertop, fireplace, basically everything except the floor tile. So once you roll it out, you're going to want to clear that canvas texture if you rolled on canvas. Unless you want that to be a background texture on your tile, which I don't think you're going to. You might, but we're just going to smooth this out. And you'll notice, yeah, it's a thick slab of clay. It needs to be for a couple reasons. One, it needs the thickness because you're going to be using it on a countertop. You're going to be putting things down on it. You don't want a flimsy, thin tile. Also, when it's a little thick, it helps prevent it from warping. When they're really, really thin, they tend to warp. You love your Bailey slab roller. I know. I love my Bailey too. So I'm going to go ahead and flip this and when I have a big long slab like this what I will do is I'm actually going to put my arm under so I'm flipping it over like this just kind of folding it over my forearm and then grabbing it and I'm not worrying about warping the clay or messing with the clay's memory because we're gonna do some stuff to it so it won't be a problem 
So I flipped it over so that I can smooth this side out now. And I'm using this yellow rib from Mud Tools. It's their number three, number three yellow. But Angelica in her book has a great suggestion that you use a drywall knife. I think they call it a knife. Drywall, it's called a knife, right? It's not a knife looking at all, but it's called like a drywall spatula, I would call it, but it's actually called a drywall knife. So I rolled this out, I let it set about 20 minutes, and now we're gonna go ahead and add our texture to it. So for the texture, you can use anything you want. It doesn't matter. Or you can have no texture and have a beautiful smooth tile that you just use to add glaze to it, or you can use to carve into or do scraffito. So I developed this rolling pin called Moroccan Tile. That's this one right here. And I developed it specifically for making tiles for my own kitchen. So this rolling pin came about because I wanted these patterns in my kitchen. And it's taken me my goodness, I don't know how long to get around to it. <laughs> this came out last September, I think, and I'm finally going to make some tiles for my own kitchen, right? So this right here is a great one, and these little squares are about two inches each, so they make a great tile. So we're going to go ahead and roll this in. So you're going to make floor tiles for your kitchen entrance to replace broken ones. Right, so make sure you roll them out thicker, though, because your tiles that are going to be stepped on have to be a thicker tile than one that would not be stepped on. So I'm going to roll this into my clay. So I'm just pressing it in. But if you wanted to use something else, certainly could do that. And then once this is done, you're going to release them. Now this is the super easy way to make tiles. If you know what size tile you want to make, I have got the, like, I wouldn't say it's a cheat, but it's like a tip, like a pro tip, right? You can buy square cookie cutters in all sizes. So if you know you need a four inch tile, you can get yourself a four inch cookie cutter and cut your tiles from that. So then you don't have to worry about it not being the right size. Now, let's just stop for a sec and talk about, well, so I wanna do my countertop and I need four four inch tiles. Say it's 16, or a tabletop that's 16 inches by 16 inches, right? So you would want four across and four down. So you just do your math, that's 16 tiles, right? And you think, well, what about the grout? Do I have to figure the grout line or the space in between your tiles? Ha. You don't. You want to know why? You don't have to worry about that. Because here's the thing. I'm going to make my tiles two by two. I've already measured in my kitchen. I need 300 and I think 18 two by two. That's this size right here. So I need 318 of these little guys. And I don't have to worry about the grout because these are going to shrink when they dry and get fired. So what happens is it's a built in little wiggle room for our grout. So you don't have to do anything. Make them the size wet that you want it to be finished and they will shrink down for you, right? It's amazing, it's brilliant. So I want two by two tiles. So I have on this set of squares written the dimensions. So this is my two inch tile right here. So a four inch tile cut cutter will result in smaller tiles. Yes, Judy, but you're gonna have to put your grout in. So when you're doing your math, it's gonna be four inches and then it will shrink and then you will have room for your grout. Yeah, it works, it's brilliant. Now you could, if you want it to be, it depends on how you do your math. If you want it to be a four inch finished tile, you need to know what your shrink rate is for your clay and then you need to add that math in to your tile when you make it. So it depends what you're doing. I know that the shrink that I'm gonna have is gonna be the space for my grout line. So I don't have to worry about changing the dimensions at all. It works brilliantly. 
Right, only a problem if you're mixing with purchased tiles, if you're gonna buy commercial tiles, which I am not gonna be. Now, these tiles here have a pattern on it. If you wanna mix pattern tiles with clear tiles, the clear tiles that don't have anything but a solid color on it are called field tiles. Those are just quiet tiles that will go in and work with your pattern and look pretty, but they don't have to have a design on them. And you'll often see on backsplashes and um, if you do a really pretty design like behind your stove or something on the wall, you will have a lot of pattern and then quiet tiles around the outside. All right, so here's the part everybody wants to know about warping. Everybody wants to know about the warping. And I'm gonna tell you, the warping is all how you dry it. 100% how you dry your pieces. So I have some boards that are three quarter inch birch plywood that have been treated with a water-based polyurethane on both sides, two coats, and they're flat because there's no warping going on. And I have a bunch of these um, in all different sizes. This is a 12 by 12, and you're gonna put your tiles on this to dry. And we will make like tile sandwiches. I'm gonna show you how to do it. So you got a tile cutter from Georgie's. Yeah, they are a little expensive, but the beautiful thing about the tile cutter is you can make perfect size tiles every time. Now, with my rolling pin, if you look, you'll see that it's already divided up. So really, if you have a straight edge and a knife, straight edge and knife, you can cut just along the lines here. And that is how my daughter made her tiles right here. So these tiles were all made that way. She did not use a cutter. She just cut with the straight edge and a knife. And that's it. So why do I treat the wood? It's a really good question. This wood will absorb moisture and it will delaminate because it's plywood. And plywood is made up of many, many layers of wood that has been laminated together. And that glue they've used in there, it'll actually start to swell and come apart if you don't treat it. So that's why we treat it so that we don't get that swelling and the boards will last much longer. So if you wanna just cut with the two inch cutter, you can do that, you can use your cutter. Or if you wanna cut, I'm gonna bring you in closer so you can really see what's going on. Or if you wanna cut with the straight edge, you can do that too. Is this a flat finish poly? It's a satin poly, yeah. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do it the simple way for a few and then we'll use the cutter because if you have this rolling pin this will work with the straight edge if you don't have the rolling pin it won't work and then let me just throw this in because i think you need more information <laughs> angelica um, in her book shows how she does it she has made these strips of masonite that she's cut four inches by 24 and you can use these to cut your strips of four inch tile, right? So you cut one row and then you turn it and you cut your next and you'll get perfect four inch tiles. So this, and I'll show how to do this in my class. Um, this way we'll do it, but for what we're doing right now, we're gonna do it this way. You got your tile cutter, so you're good to go. All right, so I'm just gonna line up this yardstick that I'm using and I'm just gonna cut straight down It looks like I can get one tile off this little bit. Oh no, I can get two. So I think I'll use my cutter for those. Because you can see we have just a couple and the scrap clay can then get wedged back up and I can use it. So for using a cutter, you just press down just like that. And then to get it out, let me sit my board here. What I will do is I'll put Two fingers at the top, two fingers at the bottom, and then just pull it off. Now, the key for drying and keeping them from warping, turn them over, face down, just like that. And then just keep going with your tiles. So can you buy this rolling pin? Yeah, claysharemarket.com. And it's made by the texture shop. You certainly can buy one of these rolling pins. So I'll pop that out. And so you just go and do that. Put them face down. That is the key. 
to getting a tile that, that doesn't warp, plus we're going to put another layer on top. So use your quilting rulers. You just have to remember to wash them after. Yeah, a quilting ruler is perfect for this. Great idea. And this clay I'm using right now is Laguna B-Mix 5. But honestly, I'm going to tell you guys, you can use any clay you want. There's no magic tile clay. There's not. And if people out there are telling you there is, they're, they, I don't know why they're telling you that. Don't listen to them. Because there's no magic tile clay. The only time you have to be concerned is if you're going to use tile that is going to be exposed to extreme temperatures. So that might be the only time you would want to well, consider that. So I'm just going to cut this next strip right here, line it up, and then just cut along the line of the rolling pin. So this is my easy way of making tiles, and I, you know, designed this rolling pin for this. Like I knew I was going to use it for this. Start down here. Bless you. So there's the next one. And I actually can just put this board up here. And so you just keep flipping them over. Now, I think I can get five on a row here. And will I put lines on the back? We have, well, I usually wait until I have a whole board, but yes. So we can skip ahead. So what I will normally do is I will get my whole board laid out with tiles, just like I'm doing right now. So imagine this board full of tiles, right? The whole thing. And then I'll put some lines on it. And the lines, now you don't glaze the back and it stays porous. So really, depending on what you're doing with it, if you're just doing something that won't be exposed to water, you could use a mastic and you don't really have to worry about putting lines on the back. But if you're gonna put it somewhere where water could get into it, you then wanna use a thin set mortar instead. And you wanna make sure you have some kind of grout lines or grabby lines, not really grout lines, in the back. And for that, it can be as simple as let me clean off my serrated rib. It can be as simple as your serrated rib. You just need something that would put a tooth on it. So I would just do this. This is all you need. Do you see? Just these little score marks are enough. So you don't have to spend a lot of time carving out a chunk. Like if you were going to use... If I was going to put these, uh, like they're big, these are little tiles. So if I was going to do great big 12 by 12 tiles, then I would take time and I'd use something like probably a trimming tool, but I just have this carving tool and I would pull some lines on the back like that. Also, if you're going to make relief tiles or sculptural tiles that have a change in thickness, what you're going to want to do is actually carve away where it's too thick so they can dry evenly and you don't end up with warping or cracking. So how much clay did I use to make that size slab, Terry? This was 12 and a half pounds of clay and it actually got me this slab and I've got a tiny bit more over at my slab roller. So you'll get, if I don't bash everything, you'll get enough clay to do, I don't know how many of these little teeny weenies, but you'll get a couple sheets of clay that are pretty big and you'll be able to do a lot with it. So I'm going to cut this one. And so I'll just keep going like that. Now, once these have dried, well, let's, let's go to the next stage. Why will it be porous on the back? So it's, the, it's still slightly porous. Yeah, they are vitrified, but there's a tooth is where I'm actually going. It's not, it's not porous, I'm sorry, there's a tooth. So if you think about in artistic terms, you, if something has a tooth that has a texture, it allows it to grab, and that's what the tooth means. So I'm sorry, yeah, it's not porous, it's a tooth. You're completely right. So you'll feel it. You'll feel that it has a tooth and you can grab it. So something like this, because it still has a tooth, because it's not glazed, right? It's not a smooth glazed surface. It will stick to the adhesive if you're using something like mastic. But if you go ahead and do the little lines like I just did here, you won't have any worries at all. There'll be plenty of tooth. 
this is enough, but when you get into bigger tiles, you do want to think about that. And these are going um, on a bed of sand, and they're going in a gecko aquarium in a habitat. So these are not, we wanted it smooth. We didn't want a tooth on that. Well, we didn't want a big scratchy tooth. Does that make sense? Hope that, it, hope that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't mean porous. Um, I was just autopilot sometimes. All right, so we're going to keep cutting, and we'll get these done. Let's go ahead and show you how to dry. All right, so once you have all of your tiles on your board, you're going to fill your board up. Whatever size tile you're making, it doesn't matter. Just fill your board up. Let me pull you out. Ooh. So pretend my board is full of tiles. And then I'm going to take another board, like this one here, and I'm going to sit it on. Now, because the board will be full of tiles, I don't have to worry. You know, it'll be nice even, and it will compress these tiles, and it will keep them from warping. And I have them face down, remember? And so I can do another layer on this board, and then I can put another board on top and keep building my layers. And I'll usually do three to four boards high. So it just, it just depends, right? And will I use tile spacers? I will, yes. So when it comes, once these are done, so you've made your tiles and they're all done, and you have them, whether they are cute little ones like this, so you might have done some little tiles, or bigger four by fours like these here. Now these were hand cut by my daughter, so keep that in mind when you're looking at them. They, each one's very unique and special, just like her. So when you go to lay them down, depending on where you're going to put them, you want to consider what you're using for an adhesive. So like I mentioned, you can use this thing called mastic, which is basically just a glue. And that works fine if it's never going to have water on it. If it's going to come in contact with water, that mastic won't work. You'll need to use a thin set mortar. And so you'll apply your mortar to your surface. Then you will use tile setters if you want. You don't have to. You can eyeball it and you can put them in without tile setters. But they're just like little crosses. They look like little white crosses. They fit in here and they give you the perfect spacing between each tile. And then after it's sat on the, on the um, thin set mortar, you can go ahead and put your grout on. And just any tile grout will work. You pick the color. You could get a plain white. You could get a color that is dyed to match your glaze colors if you want that. And it would look super cute. I'm going to go with white when I do my kitchen. But, you know, you could do any color at all. So do I cover the stack with plastic? No, I do not. I leave this open and let's go back to drying. So that's the installation. Um, you know, after you put your grout down, you're going to go back with a clean, damp sponge and wipe any excess off. And then um, that's it. It's basically done. Like you've installed tiles. It's pretty easy. And I will show you how to install tiles in my clay share class. I'll walk you through the whole thing and we'll do it step by step. So the, the compression on top of the other, five high, wouldn't that compress the bottom tiles too much? I do them five high, I've been doing it for years without an issue, but if you find it crushing, it could, it could be something. So let me just walk you through a little more of the process. So today's day one, I made the tiles. I put my tiles on my board face down. I want you all to pay attention because this is really important. So what's going to happen is tomorrow I'm going to come out and I'm going to take that top board off and I'm going to sit it to the side and now I'm at the top of my pile. I'm going to take the ones that are on the inside from the top of the pile and I'm going to put them all on the outside of this board here, right? And then the ones that are on the outside will move to the inside. Now remember this board is full. And then I will go and lift up the now empty board and sit it down and then go to my next one down. So what I'm doing is I'm rotating the tiles. So the tiles that were on the bottom tonight, tomorrow will end up on the top. The tiles that were on the inside of the board tonight will be on the outside tomorrow. And I'll keep doing that every day until they're completely dry. So that's rotating the tiles so that they are getting air exposure 
um, from all different places. It's not just on the inside or just on the outside. It's also rotating them in the stack so that I don't have only the bottom tiles on the bottom always. They will move to the top. So it's a really good way to make sure they dry evenly and dry under pressure equally. And I will leave them stacked on the boards till they're bone dry. But I will tell you, <laughs> I will tell you, do not press down on your stack once it starts drying. If you put, if you press down, now just the weight of the stack's fine, but if you pick them up like this and you, your thumbs compress them together, you could snap your tiles because some might move a little bit and have a tiny bit of bowing. It, you won't even notice it had that bowing in it. But I just want you to be aware of that. So by rotating them, I promise you, you shouldn't have any problems. And they dry face down the whole way, face down until they're completely, completely dry. So I see some more questions. Well, uh, the wooden boards have to be so thick. Well, by using thicker wooden boards, the boards themselves won't warp as much. If you use thinner boards, they're more prone to, whip, to warping. And do I use canvas? I will roll my clay out on canvas, but I transfer onto wooden boards to work because I don't want the canvas texture left on my clay. And they have to be face down because what's happened is this. We've rolled out a slab, smoothed it and everything, but when you peel it up, think about this right here. When we peel up this clay, you're pulling it this way, you're actually giving it a bit of a memory with a curve that would be this way, right? So it would curve the, if it's face up, the ends would curve upwards. So we turn it over. So what we have done is we're flattening it now. So if it tries the curve, it can't. And this is the way it needs to be to prevent them from warping. And I will tell you, I've done this for many, many years and I don't have a warping issue with my tiles or my flat slab work. And it's because I dry them this way. So if you follow my instructions, you should be okay. Um, of course, there are always, you know, exceptions to every rule. So, I mean, you never know, right? But basically, you should be good. All right. So that's, that's the, basically the tiles. If you all have any other questions, please ask and I will address them. You can switch camera. <laughs> and that's, we're done for that part. <laughs> <laughs> can you use sheetrock? You can, Donna. Yes. If I was going to use sheetrock, then I would tape the sides up so that the dust, the gypsum board dust doesn't fall out. Um, I don't use sheetrock in my studio because I don't want, I don't want to deal with that. I just use these boards. And, but you know what? Sheetrock is very easy to cut and very affordable. So you might want to, you might want to Give it a go if you're looking for an inexpensive board. Plus, sheetrock will suck the moisture out faster, so it will help them dry faster. But I wouldn't stack five high with sheetrock. No, it, that I would go less. Um, the sheetrock's going to get really heavy as it absorbs the moisture. How do I stack them in the kiln? Ah, I took a photo, and I will share it later. But pretend these are in the kiln. For bisque firing, for bisque firing, I have them standing up. So they'll just stand up in the kiln. Actually, Angelica in her book has a great photo. Let me find it. So I stand them on their edge for bisque firing. And I'll usually have three or four together. I usually have three or four of them together. And they're just kind of stacked randomly around so they're supporting each other. And then for glaze firing, I do them flat on a shelf. So you need a lot of shelves or just put a few in every firing and you'll be good. I do not poly coat the sheetrock. No, not at all. No, don't need to do that. Um, the sheetrock, you don't need to add polyurethane to it. Just go ahead and, and tape up. Let me see if she has a shot. I saw it, I remember ages ago in here, but I'll have to look through. If you really want to get into tile making, I highly recommend this book. I, I think if you just got this book, you could teach yourself to make tiles. I say that because that's what I did. <laughs> so it can be done. Um, nobody taught me to make tiles, although I learned ceramics in college. Um, they don't teach, I didn't take a tile making class. And it's, it's totally different. So here's the photo. If you all can see in the kiln, do you see how she has her pieces stacked? 
that is how I stack mine. You see how that is? You all can see that. They're standing up. Everybody on Instagram can see too. So that's how you do it for a bisque fire. And then look, she even has a picture for a glaze fire. Thank you, Angelica. You're the best. Look, laying flat for your glaze fire. So that is what you need to do. Um, these boards here I'm working off of, doesn't matter what size board you use. These are 12 by 12s. This one over here is an 18 by 24. Those are just what work in my studio. Again, this book, amazon.com slash shop slash clayshare. Pottery books, handmade tiles. You all, I'm telling you, this is a Bible. This should be the tile Bible book because it is the go-to for anybody who wants to make tiles. Uh, she's amazing. So I always defer to her because she knows what she's doing, right? You have the book and you love it too. Good, Maggie. Yeah. Um, on Amazon, it's 86 pounds, Christine. So see if they have it secondhand. In the U.S., I believe it's, I don't know how much it is. Um, how much was it brand new? So brand new, this book was $17.95 when I bought it. It's been a long time. Want to see what year that was? So laying the tile vertically has some reasons behind it. For glazing, you lay it vertically so your glazes don't run. And, but horizontally. you lay it, hor sorry, horizontally for glazing. Thank you. Vertically for doing a bisque. It takes up less space. It allows good air flow. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of reasons to bisque that way. Thank you. I get my horizontal and vertical mixed up. That would be terrible. But she said to do it that way. Ooh, what was that? There's notes in here from, a, from like over a decade ago. I love it. I love it. Um, <laughs> March 19th, 2010. <laughs> All right, so that's, that note was from that. This book was printed... 2005 so I've had the book for 15 years it's a good book though it's really good so so what would you need to do if you want to under glaze when leather hard you would take your tiles when they're leather hard you would go ahead and apply your under glaze to it and then when the under glaze has dried enough put them face down again yeah I've done it before if you're gonna carve it take the tile you're gonna under glaze and then carve, clean it up, put it back face down. Yeah, that's what I would do. I would not turn it face up because as soon as you do that, it's gonna try to cup upwards, it, it will. So you're gonna, you're always fighting that. So you wanna keep it down. And so hopefully that, that'll help you out. I see Sharon Hoppy is here. Happy birthday, Sharon. We have a few birthdays. Sharon Hoppy's birthday, Drew Seymour's birthday, and I think Diana Forbes' birthday is today. So super shout out. Um, to everybody who's having a birthday. So I'm going to keep going with making tiles on my own because guess what? I have to make 312 tiles of this size for just my island in my kitchen. And then I have the rest of the kitchen, which will probably be probably that much three times more. So I got like 1,200 tiles to make. Just a few. Not a big deal. The size info for the boards. Um, sure, Karen, happily. So this is just three quarter inch birch plywood uh, from the home store, home supply store. And it's had two coats of water-based polyurethane applied. And um, this one's a 12 by 12. This bigger one is a, 12 by, a 24 by 18. And I have some other various ones in different sizes based on what I need to use them for. So it just depends on what I'm making in the studio. I have a couple that aren't as wide. They're a little skinnier, but just as long for trays and stuff. So let's see, your birthday, 319. Uh -huh. Same amount of tiles I gotta make. <laughs> so cement board and sheetrock boards are the same. Right, and duct tape the edge. So cement board and sheetrock boards are similar. They have a, they're a little different. Um, cement boards can, are, are, they're a little heavier than a sheetrock board, but they're basically the same thing. Yeah. Do I glaze the sides? So these will not be seen on the side. Once we put grout in and you put them, um, once you 
put your thin set mortar down and you put these down and then you fill with grout you're not going to see the sides so you don't need to glaze the side but i do glaze the top where the side curls over like this spot right here yeah i glaze that but you don't need to glaze the side because you're not going to see it the mortar is going to the uh the grout is going to hide it all so you don't have to if you want to you can i mean they're your tiles you can do whatever you want with them right so if you decide hey i want to glaze the sides glaze the sides it's entirely up to you i will show the kitchen i will show the kitchen in process my plan is to bring you all along with me when i redo the kitchen and we'll start with the island and i'll share it with you all yeah we'll do it we'll go inside my house and we'll do the kevin's like oh my god <laughs> yes that's right that's what's going to happen um i can show the book again yes handmade tiles angelica pozo it's if you can find it second hand you'll probably save because it's 15 years old it's probably out of print um so i don't want you to pay full price i want you to save money how do i handle the front edge ah so you got a couple of choices, Jane. You could do a bull nose where you actually curl the tile over, but I am gonna do a wooden wrap. So we're gonna have a wooden edge. Are we gonna use hardwood? We're gonna do a hardwood wrap edge. So what it will be is you'll have your little wooden bit here and my kitchen tiles will butt up against that wooden wrap. And that's what I'm doing on our counter in our house because I like that look with the wooden wrap and I'm repainting my cabinets gray on the bottom white on the top and then we'll have these colors here let me put my put my yard stick down um, these colors here which are all amico celadons although I'm probably going to put my chun blue in for some of these tiles and I might use some other companies celadons we'll see I'm going to play with it and we'll see what we get but um, I want all like sea glass colors that's what I'm going for. So I hope that helps. Do I ever have to cut the tiles? Donna, I've installed tiles, not my handmade tiles though. When I've installed commercial tiles, I've had to cut them with a tile cutter, a tile saw. Um, this is why you measure where you're gonna put them. So I've measured my countertop. I know that the counter is 72 by, what was it? Uh, uh, what was the other one? 70, 72 by 32, 32. no 74. 32 by 74 is what my countertop is. And I divided that into two by two, right? Because they're two inch squares. And I know that that's the amount of tiles, which I wrote down on my phone, which is currently being used. So I can't reference it right now. The amount of two by two tiles I need, or if I wanted four by four tiles or, or whatever size I want. And that way I know what to make. So I don't ever just make tiles randomly. I have a plan. I know what I need to make them fit and where they're going to go. Because these are custom tiles, it's totally different than commercial tiles. Sounds like your kitchen. <laughs> right? So uh, I know, Jennifer, you just had your kitchen done, so you're probably not going to want to put tiles on your countertop right now. But you can make a little mosaic table, which I am going to do a tray. We're going to have a little, like, um, serving tray class. We'll make tiles for that. And I think we might do a tabletop too. I think we'll work our way through a tabletop. I think that'd be really fun. So we'll do that too. You could extrude your edge. Absolutely, positively, yes, right. If you have an extruder, you can make your very own bull nose edge with your extruder. Honestly, I think that's the best way to do one. You can hand make it. You will need a board that you can bend your tile over or a stick. But I'm, if you have an extruder, I would suggest you do it on your extruder. Um, we'll make one of the projects and we'll make a bullnose edge. We'll do that. And I'll show you how to make a bullnose because you don't have to do it. There are ways around it, but it does look nice when it's done and it's done well. Can I explain, let's see, how I do it with adding more clays and make some texture. I'm not exactly sure what you're asking on that. So if you wanted to use a different clay body, you could do that. Um, if you wanted to do a flat, so say you make a tile that's a nice flat, smooth tile. So this is what we would call a field tile because it's flat, smooth, nothing on it. And then this is 
our decorative tile because it has a pattern on it. So you could surround your decorative tile with field tiles. You could take and turn a field tile before it's dry, put some underglaze on it, do a little scraffito carving, right? Put some wax resistance, do some Mishima inlay, some slip trailing if you want. Um, you know, if you're gonna get into carving and relief tiles, it's a little different how you dry them because it's a whole different creature. This is just doing a simple flat countertop tile, but um, we might be able to get into some sculptural tiles. We'll see, we'll see how crazy we get with tiles. You were thinking of making tiles for your bathroom and now, Jill, you have no excuse. You can make them and they'll look amazing. And you'll go in there every time and you'll be like, I made these tiles. You'll be so happy. And everybody will be like, I cannot believe you made your own tiles. And then you can just sit there, yeah, that's, that's how I am. That's right. <laughs> and how do we dry them later? How would we dry the bullnose tile? It's a little different if you extrude a bullnose tile. You don't have to put it between a board. You can just sit on a board, cover with plastic, and let it dry. And it should be fine. So you're late, you had some birthday stuff, and you missed it, Diana, we wished you happy birthday, but guess what? We'll wish you again. Happy birthday. So what else we got? Mm -mm, seeing, you wanna make a tile serving tray? We're gonna make a tile serving tray. That'll be, um, thinking maybe beginning of May, by the time I can get it done. Yeah, we'll do that. So will I soften the edges? I will, after they have gone through the drying process and they are bone dry before they go in the kiln, like I did with this, I'm gonna go ahead and take a damp sponge and I'm just gonna lightly go around all the edges just to make sure there's no sharp spots or burrs or anything that I don't like. And if for some reason one of them, um, when I cut it, I didn't cut it straight enough, I'll go in and fix that then and take care of that then. Now, be prepared to have seconds. Be prepared to have pieces that just don't meet your quality control standards. That's fine. Every tile you make is not gonna be perfect. And that's just how it is. So expect to lose some due to possibly warping. They shouldn't, but it can happen, right? Some might not be the size you want. One you might have cut not perfectly straight. These are all little things. So if you're making tiles, a good rule of thumb is 10% extra. So if you're making 100 tiles, make 10 more tiles so you have those as your wiggle room in case something goes wrong. Might not, you might have 10 extra gorgeous tiles. But if it does, you have them to make up for that. You always want to make your own tiles and you have a few of those tiles to stick out for pen holders or air plants. So you could make your, you can totally make your own tiles and you should try it, I think you will love it. You got her book just now as a used paperback on Amazon. Woo, using Amazon points. So Lisa, did you, you didn't have to pay. You got, it, you got it used. I hope you got it for free while well, you used your points, right? Awesome, so good. And you got it for $11 on eBay. Great, if you can find it and save, this is so worth the money. And I don't want y'all to spend a ton of money on it, but I'll teach you things that she, she teaches in the book, but um, with a few of my own things thrown in. Am I gonna do a class on lowering glaze temperature for glaze cone to five, six? That's on the list and if I don't do it, we'll have Drew from Clayscapes do it because he was planning on doing some new um, glaze classes. Why Birchwood? Because that's what they have at my store. That's right. They only have, they have Birchwood when we went to buy it, so that's what I bought. If you can find another wood, use another wood. Doesn't have to be Birch, but people wanna know what this board is I'm gonna tell them the truth. It's a birch. Rich that way, you know but what is rich? Rich, honey. Birch is clean, no knots, smooth and cheap. Thank you, Rich. See, there was a reason we got birch. Thank you. And uh, Rich McNatt is the one who makes these fabulous rolling pin holders, right? Woodworks by Rich. He is the man. He is my my go-to person. I defer to on all things wood. All right. Good to have excess tiles because you never know when you might break one later, Jennifer. Exactly. They'll be gone off Amazon. Yeah, I know. Oh, they will, because I, I mentioned it, and I'm, I'm sorry if you don't, if you want it. But tell you what, pay attention, they'll come back. Somebody will be selling them somewhere. There's one more on eBay. Okay, so check eBay 
check Amazon. Um, does Barnes and Noble still sell online? Do they even still exist? I don't know. Well, I'll see if I can find other sources. Those of you out there, if you know where to get books secondhand online, if you have a good source and you can find these, you can always share it in the Clay Sharers group or the Clay Share Prime group. If you find the book and you want to share with folks, do that. All right. That's what I got. Angelica Pozo, Make and Installing Handmade Tiles. Exactly, that's the book. Birch is higher quality and a hardwood, good choice. And I know some people use pine. We went with birch. Um, I think at the time it was what they had there. But, you know, Kevin was with me and he helped pick it out, so I'm sure he knows what he's talking about, right? I always wanted to make your own tile, and you're gonna now. So exciting. Have I ever used Georgie's Interactive Pigments on leather hard clay? I never have. I only ever used that on a already fired piece. Um, so the pigments are like an oxide wash. You can apply it and then you could carve through it. You could use it that way as, an, as a slip, uh, it's a wash. But yeah, you could do that. Try it. Let me know how it turns out. I'd like to see the results. I think they'd be fabulous. Check your local, 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 <laughs> check your local library, right? Because you could just get it from your library and not have to pay for it, right? So you're going to make wall decor for your living room. Watch out, Paul. You're going to fall in love with tiles. I promise. This is, so I got my slab roller for a couple of reasons, but the main reason was I wanted to make tiles. Yeah. All right. Thank you, everyone. That is kind of a basic how to make tiles. I know there's so much more we could cover. I will be doing some classes coming up later this spring on Clayshare and we'll do some projects and we'll make more tiles and um, we'll see where we go from there. All right, everyone. So thanks again for joining me. Remember, I have my two new glazes coming out at Clayscapes Pottery. That is the cobblestone and the lake blue. So lake blue, cobblestone, Two great glazes that glaze great together. So check those out. And if you use the code EXPLORE10, you can save 10%. So don't forget about that. And I think they come out tomorrow. I think that's the plan. And then we have two new hand building classes on Clayshare. And I'll have a new wheel throwing class Friday. So we're going to do some wheel throwing. And then there'll be another wheel throwing class. And then I think I'll have a hand building class. And then another wheel throwing. So I'm going to be alternating back and forth between hand building and wheel throwing. Um, so that I try to reach everybody. So if you're a hand builder, you're getting hand building classes and then wheel thrower, wheel throwing classes. So I'll, I'll keep that going. And then in the meantime, we'll throw in a surface decoration class every once in a while too. And currently I'm doing two new classes a week, Fridays and Mondays. And I'm going to try to keep that up as long as we're all kind of staying, staying home and staying safe. I'm going to try to provide you all with double the content. So you'll have twice as many classes coming your way every week. Hopefully, as long as I can keep up with it, we'll keep doing it. All right, everyone. Um, can the rolling pins be washed under running water? Sure, if you want to, there would. Um, you will want to treat it with mineral oil after or the oil you would use for treating a butcher block, like a cutting board oil. But you can scrub them off if you need to. But you don't, I mean, honestly, I use these in the studio almost every day and I don't really wash them out ever. I might have a little bit of clay get stuck in there and I just like rub it out but that's it. Okay so those of you who are my premium members and you know who you are we're gonna be doing the private broadcast at 6 15 tonight I believe is what we got set so I'm gonna be making tiles because I gotta keep going I've got to make 318 20 19 I don't know probably 350 tiles but we'll just say 350 uh, for my kitchen and honestly, if I make extra, I've got plenty of counter that I can keep tiling. So it's not a big deal. I can just make a thousand and we'll see where we are. So I'll be making more tiles, answering your questions and hanging out with my premium members at 615. Everybody else, thank you for joining me. Um, I don't know what I'll be doing for my next live, but I'll, I'll put it up and let y'all know. You'll get posted. You'll get a little notification. You'll know. All right, everyone. Let's see. You got the book for 15 pounds, including postage. Christine. I'm so happy for you, honey. I'm so glad you found it and didn't pay, what was that, 68 pounds? Don't pay that, that's crazy. I'm glad you found it for less. Um, could you use linseed oil on the rolling pins? Yes, you can. And Diane has a brush for cleaning the rollers. That works too, just clean them out with a soft hair, hair brush. 
Jane got her book and toothbrushes are great for cleaning clay out. All right, everybody. I will catch you all later. Have a wonderful night. So wait, Julia, it's expensive in England. Christine Riley is in England. She just got it for 15 pounds. Christine, honey, where did you get that? Um, so I can share it with our YouTube friends and maybe they can save. So if you're in the UK um, and you know where to get books, share it out there because I, I want everybody to save. I don't care where I want you to, I don't care where you buy it. You don't have to buy it through the Amazon Clay Share Shop. I want you to save money and get your best deal. How do you become a member? If you are a premium member on tv.clayshare.com, and you know who you are because premium membership is $9 a month, well, $9.99 a month, or $99 a year, which basically gives you two months for free, premium members get a lot of extra private content. We do private broadcasts and, and stuff just for them. Plus, they get access to thousands of videos um, hundreds of full-length pottery classes and promotions and deals and all kinds of sponsor stuff. So you can check that out there. And we have a seven-day free trial. So I don't know, if you're home right now and you're looking for something to do, why not give it a try? It's free. You can do it free for a week and be like, nah, I don't want to do this. You might do it free for a week and be like, where have you been all my life? Thank goodness I found you, right? So hopefully. So Amazon CA had some good deals on the book. UK Amazon wants 30 pounds, so you might not want to buy it that way. So keep looking in. Your texture rollers just came in, Michelle. Woohoo! I'm so glad you got them. You're gonna love your rolling pins. Each one that I do, I hand draw the design, and it takes me days and days and days. Ask Kevin. He sat with me last night while I worked on a rolling pin for hours, and I had to start all over. It's how it goes. I'll just keep going. So let's see, I'm trying to find a discount. So we will keep trying to find a way for you all to save money on the books. Share, come find everybody on YouTube that's watching. Um, go to the Facebook Clay Share page and I have under that groups that we run. Clay Share is a, is a free public group. Come to that group and anybody who wants to share in that group where they found the book secondhand, and what country they found it. So if you're in the UK, where you found it, if you're in Canada, where you found it, share that in that group, and then everybody can hopefully help each other save money. And everybody's gonna be shocked because the book's gonna sell out. Amazon's gonna have this as the number one book in pottery. You know how it goes. And you know what? I hope Angelica gets a kickback from all that because she deserves it, because she's amazing. abooks.co.uk is where she got it in England. Okay, so Abe, Abe Books. It's shipped from the US. Is it possible right now? Ah, uh, the books. I don't know. I don't know. You have to check into that. All right, everyone. I'll catch you in a few days. I'll come on and do something probably around Friday. I'll expect a lunchtime broadcast noon Friday. I don't know what I'll be doing, but I'll do something and we'll have a good time doing it. All right, everyone. Be well, stay safe, and I'll catch you later. Bye.